rendezvous, and I was so impressed, I thought you should all meet them. Uh, folks, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Sure, my name is Christopher. And I'm Melissa. And you, you are uh, <laughs> traveling and living now in this nice Ford pickup with a camper. Yes, we are. We are. About four months now. About four months. Wow. So you're quite new to the life, nomadic. Mm -hmm. Very new. And uh, how do you like your, your uh, pickup so far and camper? Is it working well? It is. Um, we are. Uh, we definitely wanted a four-wheel drive. We wanted a good turning radius to get us into the, the woods a little deeper. And uh, it was a good mix of how large um, we wanted to go. And this is about as large as we wanted to go. Um, very yeah. comfortable. Yeah, there's a lot of options out there. For what you can do and so it's always a balancing act of you know what features you're looking for um, for us i think the biggest thing we really wanted was to be able to have the four-wheel drive capability and be able to get places um, that maybe we couldn't get if we just had a van and so the truck camper is kind of what we settled on and being a couple really really limits you um because you've got to have a certain amount of room and space and mm -hmm. you spend a lot of time alone in there together and that's working out it's big enough for you it's actually yeah. probably almost we feel like it could be smaller and it would be okay oh wow yeah um, it's yeah it's pretty luxurious in there for us <laughs> really well we'll go inside and take a look but well, that's good news so 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 far if anything is too big but it really meets your needs well the the four-wheel drive you can go anywhere we're up here you know pretty far back but not not too bad mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 really it's a good balance like I was saying yeah I think yeah the only downside <coughs> is that because it's so high up top we're very top heavy so on rough road um, you know you would expect a truck to be able to do a lot more than we can do just because we feel like we're gonna tip a lot sooner right and so you were gonna get airbags to take care of that yes after about 10,000 yeah. miles um, of driving uh, we've decided, yeah, it's a really good idea probably to put airbags in the back because um, those campers are, are heavy and the trucks are, are not designed for that amount of weight, really. Um, and especially if you're four-wheeling and, and going on anything that's that's tippy. Um, yeah, there there is a little more of a concern. It's not like just driving a pickup. You, you potentially could probably roll over. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, you have the 7.3 diesel? We do, yes. We did extensive research on, on that. Yeah. Um, we wanted, yeah, good fuel economy. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I guess a reliable engine. We didn't want engine. it to break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we heard that one usually doesn't break very easy. 7.3 is a great engine. Yep. Great engine. And what kind of fuel mileage are you getting with it? Uh, we get between 15 and 17 miles to the gallon, uh, fully loaded. Yeah. Um, highway, of course, about 17. We've gotten as low as 14 um, with it. Uh, the diesels are pretty good. Ours is a standard transmission. Uh, it's not lifted. It's got the small tires on it, the road tires for the summer. Um, so we expect that to go down when we, we change tires possibly. But uh, I definitely, I, I wouldn't really recommend a, a lifted truck for a sit-on top camper or a slide-in camper. Um, I think stock is the way to go. That is phenomenal. 15 to 17 loaded. No one's sure. doing that. Yeah, no, we're doing real good. It's a standard yes. transmission. That makes a big difference. Um, and... Uh, I mean, the downside, I guess, is it takes 15 quarts of oil when you got to do an oil change. Um, <laughs> <It's true. laughs> you love the yeah. big deal. <laughs> yeah. You love the uh, when you can fill it up, but you hate it when you get your oil changed. Yeah. That, that's it. Yeah, that's, it. <laughs> that's true of all diesel shops. Yes. Uh, and so you guys have had a really interesting and varied background. Can you give us just a brief? I mean, you've been for your young age, you've been everywhere and done lots of things. Can you just go over that really briefly? How? The things you've done? I went to school in Colorado and then uh, transferred to Hawaii and uh, it, I became a park ranger and um, National Park? Yep, National Park Ranger and I did various uh, different levels of that um, from park guide, giving tours, um, I did law enforcement for a little while, uh, I was a firefighter for a little while and um, we, we did it, Melissa and I did a quick stint in Antarctica, uh, we worked down there for a little bit, paid off our college loans and uh, or now, not, just wait, my we, college loans yeah but you don't just run right over we spent some time in antarctica <clears throat> yeah. not everyone does that so you uh, worked your way up the national park service and uh, which national parks were you at so i worked at a, a small park on the big island of hawaii uh, that's where i started right after college um pu'ukola heo and uh from there uh we went over to colorado we did our first trip in a camper uh, melissa and i and uh, didn't last that long um, 
got a job with the Park Service up at Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, I did interpretation and also EMS for them there. Um, EMS is? Uh, emergency Medical Services. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, um, a lot of altitude sickness. Uh, I was stationed at about 12,000 feet and uh, we had a lot of dehydrated and altitude sick uh, people up there. People underestimate it. It's very, very important. Yes, you must drink a lot of water, even if you're driving up. Um, yeah, I, you don't you don't want to be that sick. It's, it's just not fun at all. So drink lots of water, eat a good breakfast before you go up high, especially if you, you just flew in from a low altitude. Um, and, and you were at least one other national park I know of. Yes, um, so from, well, from there we'll go into Antarctica, I suppose, after. But um, yeah, I went to Acadia National Park. I was a dispatcher. Um, for about six months. Uh, I went to a law enforcement academy after that in California and uh, after that it was uh, I was law enforcement over in Canyonlands uh, National Park and that was uh, yeah an incredible experience. I was in the backcountry over there and uh, I was more an educator than law enforcement but um, I handed out a lot more water than tickets and uh, people generally were pretty good and it was, it was a really rewarding experience. So we, uh, nearly all law enforcement officers are evil monsters, but you're the exception. Um, that, that was a joke. That's true. Hey, no, I, know. <laughs> I was thinking, though, oh, okay. Um, no, yeah, we, we're, um, I, I'm definitely the exception. I'll just say that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so then somehow, and that was your last stint in the National Park Service? That was um, in the National Park Service, yes. Um, and so how in the world did you end up in Antarctica? As a child, I always wanted to go. I didn't have the 15 grand or whatever to get down there. Um, so I, uh, I applied for a job down there while we were in Colorado. Uh, Melissa applied for a job down there. And uh, we got accepted at different times and different stations. Um, and uh, we got, the I think, the coolest job down there, the, which is generally the lowest paid. And that was it. <coughs> you know, we were professional snow shovelers, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's plenty of snow in Antarctica, even in the summer. Uh, so, uh, and, and I did some other cool things there. Uh, I worked with the BBC helping film uh, Frozen Planet. Uh, so I lived with the Adelie Penguin Colony uh, for a little while. Oh my goodness. And uh, yeah, a couple other things. But, uh, and Melissa was, it was, you can shake the hand of a woman who's been to the South Pole. So. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so does that lead us up to pretty current then? Yeah, um, in Hawaii I worked uh, for a little while for the local government. And uh, I did that. That was the longest job I think I've had, about three years. And uh, yeah, it was a great place uh, for for many. Um, it, it wasn't a perfect fit, and I realized I didn't want to spend, you know, a full retirement, 30 years there. So uh, we uh, we bought what's behind us. <laughs> right, and moved out. Yeah, and Melissa, and you? Um. So I think for me, I kind of had a really kind of general childhood that a lot of people can relate to. Um, I lived in the suburbs, upstate New York, and, um, you know, pretty much just st stuck around there and thought I'd kind of always stick around there. And then I went to college and um, I ended up deciding I wanted to do an exchange program when I was in college. And I figured the, you know, going abroad would be really expensive. And so I decided I'll just go to Hawaii and, you know, that, that'll that be awesome. It's exotic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, did that and then met Chris when I was there. And so that was no longer an exchange program. It was my new home. And um, so from there, um, what did I do? I guess I finished my degree um, and then I was a server. Um, had, I was working at a couple different restaurants and then we both graduated, and um, Chris got the job at um, the Hayao. And so I stayed <coughs> working in restaurants, and then after that, we went to Colorado, and I did the same thing. I was a server in Colorado, and then um, we moved up to Estes Park, and I did um, equestrian photography. Oh. of all things. Um, not really a horse person, but um, it just kind of fell into it and it was wonderful. It was, you know, just sitting in the woods all day uh, taking pictures of people on horses, which was pretty fun. Um, and then when we were up there, we decided to apply um, for the jobs in Antarctica and uh, somehow we both 
got accepted and we went down there and yeah, it was... But at different times? Did I understand that right? Slightly different. We overlapped. Um, we actually left pretty much at the same time, but um, Chris went down about a month before I did. And so... I got to see the, yeah. the sunset for about 15 minutes during the yeah. day. Yeah. That's the difference of a month there. Yeah. <laughs> and how long were you in Antarctica? Um, I was there three months and you were there four months. Mm -hmm. Wow. Astounding. So you are folks who like adventure. You don't like doing the routine. Yeah. Well, we never fall into the routine very long, so apparently that's that's very true. <laughs> yeah. And so after Antarctica, well, no, yeah, that would put you back, oh, to Hawaii again. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, so we um, had a couple different park service places that we were at, um, and then actually after Canyonlands, um, I decided to go back to school, and so went back to the East Coast for schooling, and then got an internship out in Hawaii. I um, was looking to try and get back there. And so I um, got an internship out there and um, kind of started trying to do um, some work in the field of renewable energy pretty much um, was kind of what I really thought was, you know, the dream job for me. And um, so I did that for about three years. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it just I think my expectation was very idyllic, I idyllic um, of what I thought going into it would be. Going and, into um, renewable energy? Yeah, yeah, and going into that kind of a job, um, I kind of thought that, I don't know, I thought that I would be able to do really good things for the world and found that it was kind of stifled by a lot of other things that um, kind of happen in society and so, uh, it didn't really, it, it wasn't jiving. It was like, okay, I need to move on and try and find something that really kind of fits for me. And so, yeah, we both kind of made the decision that we were done with our jobs in Hawaii and mm -hmm. we moved into this. So, um, are you often, you know, you've got a, a <coughs> education potential. Uh, what do your parents think, Melissa? Do they, are they, parents, yeah, I think they think I'm a little crazy. And you're, are you wasting your life, your education? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a big one. Um, I think that, uh, in their minds that, um, you really need to be a productive citizen. Right. Um, and that, that's a value in life. That's kind of what gives you value is to do something good for the world. And I thought I was doing something good for the world and, you know, did get an education um, leading up to that whole belief system that that was really how I was going to get there. And then I got there and I, you know, checked off all the boxes and then I get to the top and I'm like, uh-uh, this is not doing good for anybody. This is um, feeding into something that's kind of broken. And so I got to kind of step aside from a system that I don't really trust or believe in. And I got to figure out what's next and I don't know what that is yet but we'll see <laughs> but for now it's being a nomad for now it's being a nomad yeah and uh so was there kind of a philosophic idea behind all of that for you um definitely yeah I think that it was very much based on um feeling like my reason for life, the reason that I'm alive and that life exists, um, is not, it doesn't fit into what I would spend, you know, eight to 10 hours of my day doing, um, feeding into, I guess it was more of like a system that just felt, um, like the priorities were all weird, you know, like, uh, people were not really at the center. It was more, financial gain of some kind usually um, sometimes it was some other you know factor power or something like that um, but it was no it, even if people would say yes it's all about people and have all the justifications for it um, when you boiled it down you could read through that and see that the real priority was usually money or something like that and so to spend you know most of my life doing something that doesn't fit for me it's just I, I I couldn't do it anymore it was just hurting my soul mm -hmm. so and in our conversation we've kind of talked about coming alive and people who are alive is that kind of what you mean yeah I mean that's 
that's one of the things that totally surprised us, I think, um, switching over to this lifestyle is that um, there's a lot of, we really didn't expect it to be about the people we met along the way, but it has become totally about that. Um, the percentage of people who are very in touch with what's going on right now, um, the way I kind of think of it in my head is they know they're going to die. So they kind of, they have a realization that this is, we're here for this brief period of time, that this is happening right now and it's not always going to be happening. And so there's something that wakes you up when you think about that. And I think we've met so many people who understand that and in that they become extremely uh, benevolent, I guess is the word. They're just extremely like giving and they want to have, you know, meaningful conversations with people. They want um, good things for the world. And I think that that's really special. And it's something that makes me never want to do anything but living like this, where you have that opportunity to meet people. I can't even begin to tell you how much I agree that uh, being in touch with death is the most important thing a human being can do. That I'm going to die and that I'd better be living right now. Because then if not, then they're kind of going through life as zombies, not alive and not dead. And and that's kind of an idea that, that you have kind of grabbed onto, isn't it, Christopher? Absolutely. Uh, I, I think it's more evident now, um, but I, I did know it before, but after just this brief amount of time on the road, um, it's, it's saddening a little bit to see people that are what I would call zombies. Um, they, they wake up, they go to work, they, they come home. Um, their, their meaning in their life is, is their job and their money. Um, their things. And their things. And, and, and we owned a house too, uh, but that was not, it never made us happy, uh, happier than, than, than this. Um, and yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's almost like you feel a little bit of an outsider when you're this free. Um, and a wonderful family though of incredible individuals such as Bob um, that uh, just take you under the wing if you need a little boost, a little advice. Um, but everything pretty much works out. Um, you're talking about meeting lovely people. If something goes wrong, we've always had someone just come out of nowhere. And, and yeah, and if you help. have your hood up in a Walmart <clears throat> parking lot, Mm -hmm. You get so many people who want to come help you. Yes. It's crazy. We've done just like random car work because we don't have a place to do it. So we do it at Walmart. And uh, so the hood's up and we're doing something in there. And, you know, people come over. Can I help you? I don't know anything about cars, but can I do something mm -hmm. for you? I mean, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. The number of people of really good people in this country is astounding. Absolutely. And all we ever hear about are the bad ones. Yes, please stop watching so much news. <laughs> please, please, please stop. Um, Good advice. There are so many great people. Um, my fear has, has dropped tremendously since I, yeah. I chucked the TV out, uh, sold the house. Um, I, I really, I, I don't, I haven't feared people or animals uh, beyond any normal small amount just to keep my, my eyes open and aware. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, my... Fear level is, is really, really quite low. And Melissa is a woman, of course you're a couple, so that made it much easier. You weren't, per, were you particularly fearful to try this or? I didn't have any fear at all. Really? I, I wow. think maybe that's a little unhealthy, but I really <laughs> didn't. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> I think you had a little less than, than I did for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but we, we talked over things and, uh, you know, situations that may arise and none of them have uh, or even come close, but, um, yeah. Yeah, as you settle into to this lifestyle, you become incredibly perceptive of your surroundings. And uh, it only takes a little while. And you really know what's going on and you realize how dangerous it was not knowing what was going on, um, you know, before. So, uh, you know, you use common sense, but it's a, it's a great lifestyle, a happy lifestyle, a very free one, um, and, uh, and it's not dangerous. <laughs> Now, as a young as young people, young couple, uh, are you concerned for your future? You're not. Are you planning for your future? Are you? I'm absolutely concerned about my future, and that's why we're doing this. Yeah. Um, that's probably not the right answer, uh, <laughs> but that's the direct answer to that question. Um, I'm sure most people are wondering. Oh yeah, financially. Um, well, 
we're only four months in. <clears throat> we could turn around, go back, but it, now that we're four months in, this is this is going great. We're really yeah. enjoying it. I don't see that um, really happening. So, um, no, we're we're not that concerned about our future. Uh, we're going to try and take care of our health. We're going to try and um, be real responsible about money. Um, but as far as you know, a hundred thousand dollar or two hundred thousand dollar retirement fund. Um, I don't think that's going to be necessary. Uh, starting out, you spend a lot more than you need to um, on the road, but um, like we were talking earlier, it's easy to live on, on $500 a month. Even a couple could live on five, dollars $600 a month if you don't drive across the country and all over the place uh, mm -hmm. like we have been. Yeah. Um, so retirement is, uh, we'll make sure we have something like that. Or, um, yeah, main, main concern would be health. So, you know, take care of yourself and your body. Yeah, I think we also have a lot of faith in needing to do this in order to find out what we could do that will allow us to continue doing it. Um, I think in the mindset of being, you know, it's like your whole life you're kind of taught there's all these habits that you form um, and they're very much reinforced when you're around people who have also been taught those habits. And so... Um, it's difficult to try and think about, okay, what would I really want to do um, based on the things about me that aren't about other, what everybody's told me I am. And so I think by doing this, it kind of helps us to get to a place where we could actually make that decision of, oh, this is actually something that we love doing and we could actually, you know, feel really good about doing this for some portion of our lives. In other kind of words, in other words, kind of society has molded you and so you really don't know, society molds us into what it wants us to be, your parents, your influence, and the media, and, te and TV, and, and mostly the schools. And so you don't know what you want to do out of life. No, and that's why it's so important yeah. we're doing this. Um, we know basically the basics. We know we love the world. We love people. Uh, we want to spread love and, and show love and, and, and peace. Um, but how we go about doing that, we, uh, we don't know yet, but we do know that this is the path to do it. Um, you have to be good in your heart and good in your soul to, to really make any benefit to the planet. And, mm -hmm. and I think also becoming, you become really aware of your impact on things when you kind of downsize and um, have that ability to actually think through. Like I know a lot about all the things that I have, like every item that had to be created and everything that I have to consume in order to be alive. Like I'm much more aware of that. And I think that that wakes you up a little too, um, to realize that, you know, you do have, you, you are causing some amount of damage just by being alive. Um, things have to die for you to be alive. And that doesn't just mean, you know, food or whatnot. That means, um, you know, we've got coolers and things that are made of plastic and metal and things had to get mined and oil had to be drilled for all of these things and so you kind of start to become aware of all of that especially when you can actually look at all of it and, and kind of um, take stock in what you actually have because it's small enough to be able to do that. So the downsizing made you, uh, downsizing from a house to fitting every, everything you own into the camper, that kind of made you, forced you to be realize, look at all the stuff I used to own and didn't really need. Yeah. We definitely. cheated because, yeah, we moved from Hawaii. And so that's we true. had four <laughs> bags. So that's my recommendation to you if you're starting this. If you have a yeah. three-bedroom house like we had. Get it down um, to four duffel bags. Put it in four duffel bags <laughs> and then fly, or you don't have to fly anywhere. You can walk out your front door. That's what you need. And actually, after we, we brought all that and put it in the, in the camper, uh, we donated a lot of that anyways. We're probably down to three duffel bags. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're a true minimalist then. And I wouldn't consider that at all, um, but, but possibly. I feel like I have a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah. But. If you can fit it all in three duffel bags, you're doing okay. That's true. Um, we did have to purchase a couple things, uh, some tools and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's but, true. Uh, but yeah, we could fit it all, all back into four easily, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, I guess that's, and, and we, yeah, I'd recommend living off that for a little while. Put it all in one room, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not, you don't know what the future holds for you. Uh, no. You could, it could be anything. 
and you're not ruling anything out. You're not f forming things into a mold and saying this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You're just living life today and seeing what happens. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's the purpose is, yeah, live today. Um, that'll help tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we, but none of us really know our future that well. Uh, we might have ideas, but um, yeah, no, we don't know. A job might come along that sounds kind of fun for a little while or a long while. Um, but right now, just uh, getting to know ourselves. Um, the egg is hatched, and now we will become a bird. What kind of bird, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but better than rolling around on the ground as an egg. So. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll fly. Maybe we'll fly, yeah. <laughs> Great. So any, any last things you'd like to share with the audience, that uh, words of wisdom that you've gained over your travels and your journey? Oh, that's hard. Yeah, I would say yeah. Do it before it's too late. Uh, and I almost I think I started this a little too late. So I would say do it now. Um, yeah. Take do a little bit of planning, uh, but generally uh, do don't do too much. I think uh, nothing's going to go as as planned totally. And uh, I think something that also is important is um, fear. So it's like there's there it's it's going to be scary to do it. I mean. It's, it's not, there's never going to be that, pl I mean, there were so many pieces of it where it's like we had to, we had to quit jobs. Like we had jobs. It's not like we, you know, lost our jobs. It was like we had them and we had to decide to say, I don't want this money anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to do something different and I'm not going to have an income. And that's very scary because your whole life you've, been taught you have to do that and you have to have that and you have to keep growing it it has to keep getting bigger um and that's amplified by you being with the county which is mm -hmm. usually one of the very best long-term jobs you can get yes i knew my retirement would be incredible um but i i didn't want to uh have poor health or um no more desire or or become too much of a i guess i'll use the word zombie again and and not really be vibrantly alive and here today, 30 years from now, or 27 years from now. Um, so it, w it was best to, to, to quit. I, I know I made the right decision, and uh, I don't regret any of that. We are definitely happier than we've been. And words of advice, yeah, read some good books that really inspire you. Uh, Walden uh, inspired me by Henry Thoreau uh, quite a bit. And take your time on reading them. You might be a slow reader, you'll find out. <laughs> so, Melissa, you were saying that it was hard for you to do that, you, to, to give away this incredible security. There's, yeah, there's... How did you, over, how did you do it? Um, we knew there was something more important, that there's, you know, it's, if, if you hold on to that security, um, you're giving up your life, really. You're kind of... At least for me, that's how it felt, was that if I hold on to this security, I'm going to keep going down this path of holding on to securities. And I think that um, securities take away your freedom, generally. They always, I would say, take away your freedom. They're, they're mutually exclusive. If you're secure, you're not free. And if you're free, you're not really secure. That's true. But the illusion of security is, is sometimes very real as well. I, I think we felt very secure. Yeah, I had a very secure job. He had a very secure job, I'd say. Um, we were living well within our means with a, a house. Um, but I, I don't think that's, that was that secure. I think financially, maybe a little more secure. Um, but we, we spend so much less now. Um, yeah, it's, we make it's it, so funny to think about how we thought we needed to make so much money when it's now it's just a joke to think that yeah that much was necessary because it's like and where did it all go <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. i mean it went to fund the lifestyle of you know mm -hmm. renovating a house and yeah. i don't even know what else we spent fuel to drive to work uh, maintaining yeah. a vehicle to drive to work i mean it's just it propagates <laughs> itself and um yeah the, yeah before you know it the, Put money away if you can, but I'm telling you to do it now, so don't worry about how much you have. <laughs> well, one thing you, you're, both of you have proven is you can always get a job and make money. Yes. Uh, as a, yeah. as a, 
in the food industry as a server, That's that job is everywhere. Exactly. You go. Unlimited. Yeah. And you have, I mean, I don't know what you're doing right, but somehow you can just pick up this great job at the drop <laughs> of the hat. That's uh, that's quite a skill. I, yeah, who knows? I mean, I, uh, I, I'm thinking about being a janitor next. I haven't done that yet. And it, it sounds really rewarding work. Um, hopefully I, I can find something that, that, that won't last that long. Yeah, but oh, come on up, little girl. This is Haley. Um, she's been our inspiration as well. She's happier too. If you're worried about having a dog on the road, oh yeah, the dog's gonna be fine. Um, real happy. Um, what dog real, wouldn't love this life? This is the best life. So much to exercise. Yeah. Um, so many scents to smell. <laughs> um, yeah. My philosophy is: give your dog the best life he he can have, and you'll have the best life you can have. And <laughs> yes. that's just what you're doing. Mm -hmm. This is the really dog's true. life for him and yes. for us. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, well, a saying I like is you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. That's and so exactly it. Time well is said. the critical element to life. Yeah. What are you doing with your time? Yes. Yep. And uh, you yeah, guys have done an amazing amount with your time. <laughs> you but never know, you, though. You, yeah, you never know. You just don't. You never know. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, if you die today, yes. you die with few regrets. Yes. Um, I'd certainly be happy about how today went and how I spent today. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know how many days, and that's been every single day, I think, since since we started living like this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your life and your yeah. thoughts with us. It's uh, really interesting. This is stuff you've given a lot of thought to, and uh, I'm really glad we can share it with our audience. So, why don't we take a look at your inside your rig? Absolutely. Sounds I'd love to show good. you. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So, folks, we're going to take a quick look around. They're a nice, really nice Ford camper, and then go inside. And you've done well with this thing getting around in the backcountry? We have, yes. It, it's done really well in the backcountry. Um, we have about 300,000 miles on it, so that gives you an idea that yeah. diesels do last a while. Mm -hmm. How many miles? It's got 301,000 miles. Oh my, that's a lot of miles. It does. Yeah. Um, but the engine hasn't sputtered once. So. Yeah. No, for a, for a diesel, they'll, they'll do it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it's, uh, it's uh, 12 foot? This, I don't this actually. A, I think well, it's 9 and a half. What does huh. it say on here? Might not say, no, but yeah, say. about 9, 10 foot. It's on a short bed. I recommend probably a long bed, yeah. but get the best truck for the money you got, and right. it yeah. works. Um, and uh, this is the camper, so let's, let's head inside. Yeah. Yep. Well, my first thought is it feels really open in here. Yes. For a truck camper. Yeah. Come on. It, it does. It, it's uh, it's always this clean. No, <laughs> oh, not at all. Um, so <laughs> it, you kind of need to. You get really good organization. Yeah. Um, but you, it, this is a very open camper. Um, we we kind of wanted just kind of bare bones. We did take out things like a table. Um, we have a portable one that we use inside and outside um, to give more room when there's two people walking around. Um, you want uh, aisles clear. So. Right, and that's what stood out to me right away was that the you have no dinette. That's what you mean. Yeah. You took out the table. Yeah, and we uh, don't really use it. We didn't use it when we had it, and we tried, you know, downsizing the table. So we kind of, you know, tried to make a small one, and it still it was just really too much. So. So you just took works. out the dine. There should be a dinette in the middle. This would turn into a bed. Yes. Did yeah. you cut this off? Um, this is no, not big. It, it kind of it'll pull out. Um, we've never used it, but yeah, usually it just sticks how it is, and we like to just do dinners and whatnot outside. Usually, or we'll just sit in the bed. So, but it's a reasonably comfortable place for you to sit. Yeah, and, uh, and lounge and work. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, work's the big one. Yeah, it's nice to work out yeah. of bed. Yeah. We're doing stuff uh, on the computer, absolutely. And yeah, we had to build an office, as you can probably see behind. <laughs> oh, that's with a, a little office. printer and uh, yeah. computers. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and it was actually pretty easy. I mean, this has a lot of storage, but we so wanted... So you said, is that your monitor there? Uh, nope, uh, that's uh, behind there is just a fan. But, okay. Uh, those oh, are blackout yeah. curtains we just put up there. Um, yeah. Fan. And yeah, okay. the power setup, it's uh, it's a solar setup, so we have two panels on the roof. What, um, 100 each? Uh, I believe they're 100 each. Mm -hmm. And we have yeah. two um, batteries in here. 
a car battery, or they're not car, they're deep cycle. Deep cycles. And then we wired them to the alternator of our truck. Our truck's actually an ambulance package, so it throws out, it has two alternators, and it throws out a lot of power. So if we are driving, it, it will charge um, the batteries in the back. And uh, we put an isolator in there so that if we wanted to use a lot of power back here, we don't drain our front batteries down and we can't start the truck in the morning. So uh, right. that's a good yeah. idea. Um, we got a real that was a fun project that was like stretching our capabilities and yes it worked out so it's good <laughs> it worked out I, I think i only shocked myself once so, <laughs> yeah. that's a good day yeah, yeah. it's a great day <laughs> um, yeah pretty basic we, we put in some shelves we took out some yeah. stuff uh melissa did this floor here um this is just mm -hmm. a lay on peel the floor and peel and stick uh, after tiling our house with ceramic in Hawaii, this was very easy, <laughs> and I think it cost us about twenty dollars to do. Yeah. Um, and Melissa also reupholstered the the couch here. Yeah, that was half failed project, but it works for it, now. It works out great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> foam is a little more expensive than you think. So. Yeah. Foam is, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a petroleum product. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And so you got a nice big kitchen here, so yes. you can uh, you can work. You have an oven. Do you use your yeah. oven? Yeah. We do. You know? We use it. We use the oven actually quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and three burners and yeah, two little sinks and we've never this have... ends up being our counter space. We just have this guy that sits in there and, and it's just um, got uh, pieces yeah. of wood to keep it flying around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is like, you know how everybody has like an everything drawer in their oh, yeah. house? Yeah. So that's our everything drawer. Right. And pretty good storage overhead there. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. a pantry over here. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The pantry is uh, right there. We mm -hmm. put in some shelves in there so that it would hold more food and whatnot. And then above we just keep, you know, like all of our pot, our pot and pan yeah. <laughs> coffee stuff. Um, and then I don't even know what's over here. Cans. Really very utensils. little for yeah. living in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so you use, uh, you have a hot water heater, the, the you use your tanks, the whole thing. Yes, yeah, so we yeah. have a hot water heater. Um, this is a fridge that we currently run off propane. If we had a little more solar, I think we could run it off solar. Um, and let's mm -hmm. see, we have a bathroom as well. well can we, um, we can see. see that, it's behind you. Yep. I don't know if that one's been cleaned, but you're welcome <laughs> to take a look. Um, that's one of the things we learned on, on the road is you use the bathroom less and less. You, yeah. you think you need a full bathroom with a shower and a flush toilet. Um, without getting into too many details, it's, it's more pleasant to go outside. Um, in fact, when I'm in a city now and I have to use a public restroom, uh, I, I almost, pre I'd always prefer, not, I would, across the board, every single time I prefer a tree. And, uh, but I shouldn't, I'm the male here talking, so. No, same for me. It's kind of, I think I might be unique in that sense. Um, I think for women, usually they like to <coughs> pee in toilets and whatnot, but I'd so much rather do all of my business outside. It's really, it, it's, it's a lot nicer. That is pretty unique. <laughs> I, I, I think that is fairly unique. Yeah. yeah. So you find yourself not, well, you don't, I think you said you didn't use your black tanks, basically. Yeah, no, um, in, in the city, we, we do use them for, for pee. Um, yeah. And, uh, we yeah, we, we've never made black water except for the, the, the urine uh, would be, would be I guess, probably considered that. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a five-gallon bucket in the city, just in case? Well, no, in the uh, city, you'd go to a public restroom. Yeah, uh, well, Usually, you know, I, 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 I can show you the... A real simple solution that we used to have a five gallon bucket, but um, if you just put a couple of these bags, oh, sure, yeah, right, right in the toilet, um, just like that, and it, there's your and it's, there's your number two, yep, yeah, sure, of course. I know I've known people who do that, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, do you use the uh shower then? We yes, do. we do, yeah. do use shower. the shower, the um, shower is really mm -hmm. nice, and we we've Actually, most recently been using solar shower um, water, just that way we're not using propane to heat any water, and um, it's pretty easy just to fill the bags, but mainly it's mm -hmm. to get well, out of the wind. So you have um, them sitting right here. There we they do. Are. Yes. There's two solar showers there. That's right. You'll have them out, get them warm, and uh, there's yes. your shower. No, they'll get really hot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, 
And you got, yeah, what, I mean, things, you can fit things just yeah, about anywhere. You got your guitar kind of over amazing. here. That's, um, um, yeah. We built a couple shelves and we just stayed real basic. And if you go to like Home Depot, they'll actually cut wood for you. Oh, sure. Um, mm -hmm. So. Well, why don't we do one more thing first? Chris, would you mind mm -hmm. stepping in the shower? Oh, that's sure. a large shower. I'm six foot tall. For a and truck camper. Is, yeah, yeah, it's a very large shower. I, and I fit fine here and um, <laughs> I can use either this one or since these are gravity fed, probably could put them on the roof, but but I'll just kneel or I'll sit on the toilet, and I and I get a real nice good shower. Oh yeah. Um, uh, there. Yeah. So that is an amazingly large shower. Yes, it's for, very uh, large for a truck camper. I think you could you could get two or yeah. two in there easy. So there's your guitar, your camera. Yeah. Just more, you know, your stuff. Just Normal stuff. stuff. Yeah. 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 The clothes stay behind the bed and those. Yep, we've cabinets. just got those cabinets there, and that holds clothes. Mm. Really nice. Uh, this would be a great home. I could see living in here indefinitely. Oh yeah, it's kind of how we said before. It's almost more than we need. It, we kind of thought we'd be downsizing to a place where it was sometimes a struggle, and it's just not. It's we never really. We we just have everything that a house has. So, I think usually when we meet people, they're. We've met a lot of people where it's like there's like four guys living in a tr the back of a truck or something, and we just feel like, wow, we've got so much. Yeah. So It took us about a week or so to find this. So we were living yeah. in the back of a pickup truck bed, so we found this. I mean, it was a huge yeah. step up, too, yeah. of course. Right. <laughs> um, and now back then it was snowing. Uh, yeah. But you have found yourself concerned with its weight. Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, it's, a, it's a very heavy That's camper. Heavy. Um, I, I need to get the exact specs out, but I think uh, it, it's heavy. These are mostly made for probably the weekend adventures, and um, mm -hmm. so it's so hard it's on the truck. on the truck all the time. Yes. Um, which, why we want to get the airbags, our um, leaf springs in the back are bottomed out. Mm -hmm. Just having this thing on here, doesn't matter if we have water in it or not, they're just, they're bottomed out. Mm -hmm. so. so if you came across a really screaming deal on an ultralight camper you yes. might trade yeah i would absolutely yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but just because in the long run it's better for your truck not to be overloaded yeah and, and it's mm -hmm. overall going to be a more uh a safer drive an easier yeah, drive. drive um when the winds are blowing 30 or 40 on the interstate and out west here the speed limit can be 80 um i'll, I'll be doing 50 55 um so uh and i have no problem with that i enjoy seeing the country at that speed but uh, that's just the, the reality of of swaying you know you, you gotta a lot of weight and a lot of surface area, so uh, I certainly would trade. Well, you've got everything you could want out of a home. Plenty of room. It feels comfortable. It's cozy. Uh, you, and you, your furnace works. You have a furnace works yep. great. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, that's good. everything you could want. You have yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. Wow, great life. Sure is. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing your home with us and your story. It just uh, you're fascinating people. Maybe we'll do this. We'll plan on doing this once a year and that and renewing fun. a video, and yes. we'll uh, find out how you've done and changes you're making and what you did right and what you did wrong. But so far, you're doing everything right. It sounds like. Yes, we're we're learning, and that's we're that's learning. doing something right. right. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and we're enjoying ourselves. Right. And uh, yes. Okay, well, thank you much, and uh, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this tour and meeting some nice, really nice young couple. And uh, in the meantime, uh, like us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel, and we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.